Hi, my name is Dana Walden, and I am supporting the Johnson Cancer Center Foundation. My mother, Cheryl, who has been one of the greatest role models in my life, was diagnosed about 11 years ago with a very rare form of cancer. It's called follicular lymphoma. It is a lymphoma which the origin is at the hair follicle. The good news is my mom was diagnosed with an indolent form of the disease, very slow growing, but the bad news was it was stage three. I remember the doctor saying to me, we're gonna hit this with a mallet and we're gonna knock it out of her and then she'll start to recover from the treatment. And there was just something, you know, in the back of my head that just didn't make sense to me about it. The no notion of taking a woman who, at the time, was 71 years old, who was asymptomatic, she was perfectly healthy, and making her really sick with the goal being her being healthier, just didn't, it didn't connect for me. And uh, a really good friend of mine, Jay Suras, had um, just come through an experience with his father who unfortunately didn't survive the cancer, but at Johnson Cancer Center, his life was extended dramatically from his first diagnosis. And Jay said, you know, you have to come talk to the doctors at Johnson Cancer Center. And we did. They wrapped their arms around my mother and our family, and my mom was treated with a relatively new treatment at the time, a drug called Rituxan that doesn't have the side effects of chemo. The only question was, would my mom be responsive to Rituxan, which she was, and that was 11 years ago. My mom has been in remission ever since, and I am deeply indebted to Johnson for that. Peter Chernin, who was one of my great mentors in my career, he said, you know, these seats that we occupy, they're rented. One day, we're gonna wake up, and you're not going to be at the time chairman of the Fox Television Group. You're gonna be just a person, and the obligation that you have as a person who gets to sit in that exact seat is you have to use it for good. You're making high quality shows, and that's great. We have, I think, a relatively noble mission in terms of what our practical job is, and that relates to quality and making our studios the best possible home for people to work, but outside of that, you know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not curing cancer, I'm making TV. And while TV is great, I don't save lives. And so I really just decided that I was going to use this seat to try and shine a light and try and raise critical funds for people and organizations who are actually curing cancer. They are saving lives. We are a town of thinkers, doers, and creators, and this event is where creativity and science come together in full force. I think there was a time early on where if I raised my voice a little bit, the tone of my voice was judged more harshly than my male counterparts. And I'm aware of the role that I play in the life of other women in our company. And I want them to see someone who's tough. I don't think it's a negative attribute to be tough in your job. These are hard jobs, you're overseeing a lot of people, but you have to be fair and you have to be kind and you have to have compassion. Because I started out in publicity, I was oftentimes given access to meetings that I was the youngest, least experienced person in the room, but I was observing so that I could coordinate press around some activities. What I always noticed is how few women were in the room. And I also noticed that the women who were in the room took on a lot of the personalities or the mannerisms or the affects of the men in the room. It's kind of what you had to do to fit in. There just wasn't an opportunity to be your authentic self in those rooms because you were the only one, so you were just trying to assimilate. When I think about my direct report group, which is now half women, half men, and these are presidents of the organization, people are seeing themselves in both sides. And I think that's just filling this generation of women with hope and excitement, and it's helping them to shape what their goals are. For sure, this generation is more confident than, you know, my generation growing up professionally, and certainly more so than the generation of women that came just before me. 
who were really the trailblazers and they were really the, you know, the people who broke through and made it possible for me to be in the role I am in currently.